Good morning, First Church. How's everybody this morning? I figured I'd wake you up if you haven't already been awoken from all this beautiful music we've seen or heard the last couple days with the Carolina Country Music Festival. Or I need to wake you up because you were there last night and still dragging. Again, we're so glad to have you this morning on our Youth Sunday. Uh, hopefully you will see our brightest and best uh, that will come up here this morning. I know that will be the case. I have uh, several announcements uh, that you will also see in your bulletin. Uh, the first being our volunteer spotlight. Our very own Ava Hussey is the volunteer uh, in the spotlight. That was a surprise. Um, I We thank her for everything she does uh, with the contemporary band. Uh, she has been a blessing to our church in our contemporary service. Uh, secondly, I want to bring your attention to Vacation Bible School. Uh, this is for rising pre-K um, students all the way to fifth graders. Um, we do have some outliers, older uh, kids that will be assisting with that. If you want to do that, you can check via our uh, Facebook page uh, as well as the uh, websites that you see there. Also, starting this Sunday, for those that want to get physically fit uh, with some faith, family, and fitness, we will start our F3 program this Wednesday at 6 p.m. at 66th Avenue North. Uh, we'll do um, a brief devotion, and then we will do some working out, and then probably play some games. So if you want to interact with our youth and youth you want to interact with our adults, we'd love to have you for that. And then um, lastly, I want to bring it to your attention um, as our associate pastor will be transitioned into a senior pastor. And her last Sunday will be June 26th. So we encourage everyone to come and uh, just love on Meredith one last time before she transitions down the street to her new appointment. With that being said, if everybody would stand up, shake hands, hug, fist bump, again, welcome.
Please join me as we affirm, affirm our faith together. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ as our only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is in the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You are so wonderful, and we worship you. You are the source of a river of love and grace that transforms the world. We offer you our young hearts, minds, and bodies. Help us to grow in the goodness of your kingdom. May we shine out in the times of darkness, stand safely upon the truth, and not be shaken, and see your vision for the world and follow you. Come use our energy to care for the lost. Come take our creativity to meet with the brokenhearted. Come use our youthfulness to bring joy and peace, and your hope to bring light to everyone. We ask these things in your name so that we can glorify you, Lord, as we join together to say the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we ask our ushers to come forward to collect our gifts, tithes, and offerings.
our financial offering we give you all that we are and everything that you have entrusted to us come bless these gifts for the sake of your kingdom and glory amen Baby seat. today's scripture comes from first timothy chapter 4 verse 12 don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech in conduct in love, in faith, and in purity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. you who don't know me I'm just one of the points of a trifecta Melody Gildner I'm a co-youth director here with Chad Mullinex and then of course Grant so I'm just one of the many 
working parts of this group. Um, I'd like to welcome you today, um, and as I stand up here today and reflect upon today's scripture, as well as my involvement with First Church Youth for the past seven years, I can certainly attest to how our youth continuously set examples of being believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. For starters, instead of our youth program dwindling or basically becoming non-existent while COVID-19 shut down everything else, our youth and the program that they continue to help build has blossomed from a handful of youth attending regularly to now an average of 25 to 30 youth on Sunday evenings and 10 to 15 youth at youth breakfast on Wednesday mornings during the school year. It's been through their speech, their conduct, love, faith, and purity that they have brought friends and more youth to First Church, and more importantly, to knowing Christ. Also, our youth truly are examples of God's hands and feet in service here in our own Myrtle Beach community and beyond. It may sometimes seem that our youth are not always seen or heard, because there's so much going on here at First Church. But youth missions such as Shepherd's Child, Sockahatchee, bunk bed building and delivering to families in need that are around Horry County, assisting church members with lawn work or putting together or moving furniture, as well as assisting in various church events. You name it, you ask of it, and our youth continue to show up. Today on Youth Sunday, we have three of our seniors, Ava Hussey, Reagan McQueen, and Brody Runzer, who have been a part of First Church since graduating from our Child Development Ministry program as preschoolers many years ago. They have been asked to share how they have been involved in our church and how this church has shaped them as young adults today, and I'd like to welcome them to speak. Good morning. Um, my name is Brody Runcer. The other day I was told I need to write a speech about, about my childhood growing up through the church. And of course I wrote it the day of. <laughs> I was just a little boy and it still feels like yesterday I was getting yelled at at Vacation Bible School by Chad Mullinex. <laughs> I cannot thank you guys enough for all you have done for me over the years. It means so much to all of us. My favorite times as a kid were going to Vacation Bible School where we had some really good meals and some really cool art projects. People always say time will fly, have the most fun possible. So I listened and now after four super short years, here I am furthering my education at the University of South Carolina. If I had to give any advice to anyone, it would just be to stay grateful and enjoy life through the ups and downs, always keep your head up and keep pushing because in the end it will all be worth it. Thank you again to all of the church the youth directors, and to my parents because I wouldn't be the man I am today without them. I'd also like to thank all of the youth for all the fun times we had, and I'll never forget them. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ava. Growing up in the church, I always knew believing God was important. I was always brought to a service in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, so when I started sixth grade, I knew the next step was to join the youth program. That ended up being one of the best decisions of my life. I got a wonderful support system and great fellowship through friends I made back in preschool and CDM. And we got to do a lot of fun activities with God being the motivation. Sockahatchee was probably my favorite and definitely the most life-changing, so I encourage all of you guys to go when you can. But to be honest, um, entering the youth program was life-changing as a whole. Even though I grew up in the church, I always struggled a lot with doubt, and because of this, I think I never really gave God my full dedication. Initially in middle school, God 
kind of became a background noise and I always seemed to push off deepening my faith to like another day, another week. I could tell there was something missing though because for the first part of middle school, it felt like there was an empty part to myself. The youth program changed that for me. For the first time, I was really engaging in deep conversations and voicing questions that I never really would have before. And I found a lot of friends that also felt like God could fill some missing piece of them. It became a great way to place God in multiple parts of my week because we got to do a breakfast on Tuesday and also youth group on Sunday. <laughs> Up until high school, though, there was still more I felt like I could give. And as much as I love youth group, I never really went home and deepened my faith. It was always with other people. Luckily enough, around that time, my youth directors, Chad and Melody for the most part, were encouraging us to read the Bible for ourselves and talk to God about what we read. I finally decided to give it a try one night after we went to Revolution. Reading the Bible was really overwhelming at first, but even if I didn't fully understand what I was reading, I still tried to pray about it every night. Eventually, conversations with God about what I read turned into conversations about my life and what I was struggling with and what those around me were struggling with. I started to feel that weight come up, and I think it was because I was having conversations with God about some deep topics that normally I felt really uncomfortable about talking with or ashamed. And I felt seen, even though I wasn't talking to a physical entity. <laughs> Again, this wouldn't have been possible with my, without my community at FUMC and my youth directors. They continually pushed me and the rest of the youth to get in our Bibles and not say, I'll just do it tomorrow or I'll do it the next week. I only wish I had taken what they said to heart sooner. <laughs> Another influential part of the youth group to me is the last youth director I haven't mentioned, Grant Neesmith. One of the greatest ways I felt a connection to God was through singing. And I really got into this once COVID hit, actually. When the pandemic happened, the world kind of seemed to stop, but church didn't, and God didn't. Grant one day asked me if I wanted to help sing a few songs each week for the church live stream. And if I'm being honest, I initially told myself I didn't want to take on something else. But for some reason, I felt some pull to say yes. And I think that pull was God, because worshiping through song every week really sparked something in me I hadn't felt before. It's my favorite thing I've ever done with the church. Also, while in COVID times, I started spending a lot more time on my phone and social media. And once I started singing in the church and that became a forethought of myself throughout the week, I also started seeing posts on social media about church and about God. And I think that's another way I got reached. There's probably some sort of technological reasoning for this, but I really just think it was God. In conclusion, not only did FUMC provide me loving friends and church family growing up, but it was also the place I felt my first spark for God, and with the important members I mentioned, it helped me grow it even further. Thank you. Hi. Oh, sorry. I'm a little bit nervous today. <laughs> um, now, now, most of you already know me. I'm, I'm Reagan. Well, most of you know me because of him. <laughs> but um, when I was first asked to come here and give this speech, I was really excited to be able to come up here and share some of my favorite moments about my time here at FUMC and looking back on all of them. But then when I started writing this, I quickly realized how difficult that is because I don't have enough time to explore all of them. There's just too many to talk about. Even then, I think, I think it's still important to try, so I hope I can share with you a few of my favorite moments that have stood out to me throughout my entire time here. Now, obviously, the music program was a big part of my life here, and it's not just because he's the director. I'm going to keep making that joke, so. <laughs> uh, my mom tells me that before I was even born, I would kick along to the playing of the handbells in church every Sunday. Now, of course, I don't actually remember that part, but 
But I do have a lot of good memories of being in this church's music program. I sang in the children's choir with Miss Lisa. I performed in recitals and plays, and even did handbells once I was old enough. But one thing that always stood out to me about the music program was something a little obscure. They were the pizza rolls. <laughs> Every Every so often, when we were over practicing handbells, Miss Jane would use the oven at the Britain Center to make us pizza rolls as a snack. And we were always so excited to have them that we wouldn't wait for them to cool down and would scald our own mouths in the process. <laughs> and obviously, we all loved them. But what stands out to me about that moment was that Miss Jane didn't have to do that for all of us. We already loved playing handbells so much. But she did it anyway, and it just made coming there and practicing that much more enjoyable. It gave me a love for music, and that extended to the rest of the music program and so many other groups within the church. But of course, I didn't start out in handbells and choir and all that. I started out at CDM with Ava and Brody and so many others in the infant room with Miss Dot. And you know, during my time there, I learned socialization skills, academics, and Christian values, but it was the friends that stuck with me most. You know, several of them I went through primary, elementary, and intermediate school with, and two of which you just heard gave some pretty good speeches. <laughs> but the others I wouldn't see for some time again, and I met them when I started high school at the Scholars Academy. And these friendships, they've lasted through my entire life and have been some of my most treasured. But they wouldn't have been possible if I didn't meet those people at CDM. And for that, I'm always going to be grateful, because they've helped shape who I am. And now, obviously my interactions with the church didn't end entirely up at the Britain Center. And every Sunday we would come here to the 8.30 service, and then we would go to Sunday school afterwards. And being here helped me grow my faith more than I could ever have done on my own. But the part that helped me the most probably were the ABCs, or Acolytes, Bible Bears, and Crucifers who don't deal with them on a weekly, for those who don't deal with them on a weekly basis. It seemed like it took me forever as a kid to be old enough to actually be an ABC, but man did I want to be one. It always seemed so cool to be able to carry the Bible down in, in, on Sundays, and it didn't just mean bringing in the cross for me. Now, as a kid, I was very hyperactive, especially when I was told to sit still. <laughs> but being an ABC gave me an added reason to focus in on the service. It helped me pay attention, and that helped me grow even more in my faith. But it also made me realize how much this church can do to help other, the children grow in their faith. It's why I started helping out with the ABCs in a greater role, organizing them, training them, trying to pass on a little bit of the experience that was given to me to all the youth who had come after me. And I hope that I've done a good job of that, but at the same time I just hope that in some part the youth have been able to gain some new experience and grow in their faith than I did. But speaking of the youth, probably some of the most memorable experiences I've had have come from them. You know, we've, as Ms. Mel said, we've helped clean up yards at members' houses, we built beds for those in need, and we've even traveled to entire other cities to help out where it was needed. But it all, in between all of that, we also had a lot of fun. You know, we did countless activities, including probably the most intense game of hide-and-seek I've ever been a part of, as well as the only kickball game I've ever been a part of where someone gets tackled. And, Macy, I am still very sorry about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to stop being sorry about that, but you've got to admit, it was kind of funny. <laughs> and beyond just the activities, there were also the youth directors and parents who helped to make all that possible. I know Ms. Mel talked about how we made the youth great, but so did they. They turned this group into something that's very just one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done. And it made the youth group a great group to be part of, and one I'm definitely going to miss going forward. Now, I know at this point I've probably been rambling a little bit, but um, 
I want to end off on something a bit more recent that I think encapsulates the connection I feel with the church and all of you. Now, obviously the past couple of years have been chaotic. COVID happened and is honestly still going on. But on top of that, for some of the seniors, we had to focus on graduation and college and all the craziness that comes with that. You know, we had to answer the thousand or so forms each college gave to us and give, I don't know, a hundred essays per college. It was an experience. But throughout that entire experience, I could always count on the church to be supportive of me. Whenever I came on Sundays, someone would always come up to me and ask how things were going. You know, they give little bits of advice or encouragement, and it just helped me get through that entire process. Even as I endured the end, seemingly endless waits for colleges to respond, and even more than one rejection letters, this church never stopped supporting me. It's given me countless encouragement, both through, through that process and through my entire life, and gave me the motivation I needed to keep going through the hardships. Now, while I may be living, leaving for college soon, I want all of you to know that everything you've done for me and for all of the youth over the years, it's helped make us who we are and helped get us to where we are now. I would not be me without this church. And for that, I thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> I thought it was going to be bad when my daughter's graduating college. I've got high school, but man, these, uh, these youth that we have, especially the senior class, have been extremely special to us. Um, a couple things to them. Brody, you would have got yelled at again if you'd have went to the other college in South Carolina versus the <laughs> University of South Carolina. Um, Ava, I absolutely second what George said um, several weeks ago about maybe you need to change your major to music because you have a talent, a God-given talent that um, has blessed us uh, as well as this church. And Reagan, you were safe. Macy was in the baseline. You absolutely <laughs> should have done that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it is a pleasure to stand in front of you today for you Sunday. It's an opportunity to see the future of our church. And we can see with the kids that we have here today, the future is bright. When we started two years ago, when George gave us that call about assisting with the youth group, we all had reservations. You want us to be part-time, full-time youth ministers? Do you know who I am? Do you know what I did? You want me to go and teach the future of our youth? He said, absolutely. And it wasn't George that made that call that day to myself, Mel, and Grant. That was a direct line from God. And to have the opportunity to stand up here today and talk about these wonderful young men and women, it has been an absolute pleasure. To start with eight kids on Zoom going, I don't know how we're going to get through next week. Reagan helped us with the Zoom. Regis guided us. And we just built a special connection with each and every one of these kids. We got to go out and do Faith, Family, and Fitness, and we started that together. We started with eight people. And now we have over 30 to 35. And I tell these kids all the time, and they're not very big movie buffs, especially late 80s, early 90s, but I always quote the Jerry Maguire movie at the end when they're like, that's what I want. That's what I want right there. I want that compassion. I want that connection. And that's what we have here. I love each and every one of these kids as my own. Sometimes my kids get jealous because they have a bunch of brothers and sisters. But it's an amazing group of people that we have. This is the love of Christ. And we tell them every time we see them, 
You may be the only Christ somebody sees. How are you going to respond? In word and in faith. In 1 Timothy 4.12 it tells us, Do not let them look down on you because you are young. Guys, it doesn't matter what your age is. You can teach each and every person in this church about Christ. You can lead from the front. And I challenge you. Too bad Rick's not here, right? Davis. But I challenge these kids and I challenge you in this pulpit to lead from the front. And you're doing that, guys. The future is strong. Christ is here. Christ is with us. And Christ will continue to be with us. And he tells us, but set an example as believers in all things that we do. We learn more from these kids than they learn from us. Compassion and empathy. To go out and interact with the public within our community, within our state, and even internationally. And be the light of Christ that they have become. We can learn something from these kids because the future is strong with them. And then love. I haven't had a more loving group of people ever. These kids are amazing. The interactions that we have with them on a daily basis. I hang out with them, we talk. Me and Brody do this um, jump booty bump, as we call it. Every time we see them, we did it at graduation. It's the love that we have for each other. And that emulates what we see in Christ. In here. And if we can learn from something from these kids about that love. And we treat each other as they treat us. And most of the time, themselves. We'd be a whole different world. And then Timothy tells us, and in faith. Faithfulness. That's what this youth group has been for the last two years. That's what these seniors have been. I can't tell you being in this church, helping with the youth group for the last 20 years, the faith that these kids have of being here consistently. Usually seniors check out after the second semester. Parents don't know anything. They don't want to hang out with the youth group because they want to go to the beach and, and do what seniors do because they're halfway out the door. But not this group. They were here most every Sunday. They definitely were at Chick-fil-A on Wednesdays. But the love that they showed, the faith that they showed, emulates what this scripture embodies. So, congregation, the future is strong. They do have it. Christ is in them, in this church, and within this community. They will, they will set the world on fire for Christ. And we will help them do that. Thank you. I'd like to close in just saying that, as you've heard today from our seniors, from Chad, and you've witnessed with our youth participating in the um, worship today, our youth our church, we are building and supporting our young people to be believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. What more can we ask for other than to praise God for these wonderful youth that we have here at First Church? And that may we here at First Church continue to build and support them in their faith journey with God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you will, please rise and let's sing together from the insert in your bulletin, our final hymn this morning, I Saw the Light. Wonders
May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen.